Hi everyone, this is our channel, Meet the Real Story. Please, like, share and subscribe. Don't we all feel special sometimes? I grew up in an orphan house. I'm not trying to pretend that there was anything special about it, but I grew up with this nagging voice inside my head telling me how special I am and that my life will eventually turn upside down. It turned out I was not being delusional or anything. What happened to me was every foster child's dream. If only I knew what my future held for me. My mom, dad, and twin sister committed suicide in 1992. I was saved by my extended family, only to get abandoned later. I was disowned, not because two of the wealthiest families in the city couldn't raise me, but because it was a curse for their reputation. My mom and dad were not married, and that brought them so much shame until they took their own lives. Fast forward a few months later, one day I woke up at a children's home. I'm an orphan now. I have absolutely no memories of my parents, or even my twin sister, but I do remember my extended family very well. They gave me up when I was six years old. My uncle is an extremely rich businessman. He was never really bad to me. In fact, he put me in what you can call a fancy home. Although he promised to visit me every weekend, he never did. I was put in a medium-sized room with four other girls, Rosaline, Claire, Bella, and me, Rachel. They were all dressed in clean nightgowns, but they were all the same color, pale green. Mrs. Milton, our guardian, gave me a similar gown to put on. It felt as if I was admitted into kids' military. Our hair was always put up in a tight bun. We all looked the same. Mrs. Milton was not the kindest person you could come across, but she wasn't evil either. The house was divided into two sections, one for the boys and one for the girls. The only time we met the boys was in the outside building, which was some sort of a school. We took a few classes every day and to be honest, we had some really good teachers. I always sat next to a boy called Nate. I thought he was super smart and he always helped with my math homework because numbers were never really my field of expertise. We eventually became really good friends. Whenever I went back to the room, all the girls were too occupied with their toys and they were all good friends already. It felt like I was an outsider. However, a few months later, I became the alpha of the group. Don't get me wrong, this is not another Oliver Twist story. We used to pull pranks on each other all the time, and we had a really good laugh. I mean, being in a foster home is not exactly a vacation, so we made the best out of a bad situation. When the girls would go to sleep at night, I would go fake sleeping until Mrs. Milton had gone to sleep as well. Then. I would stare out that tiny, teeny window and start counting the stars one by one. I named one after my dad, one after my mom, one after my twin sister, and finally, one after Nate. I would stay up all night long daydreaming until I fell asleep. Mrs. Milton would wake us up around 6 a.m. to have breakfast and go to class. It went on like that for years and years. Every day seemed exactly like the other, except on the weekends, which wasn't really much of a weekend. It only meant we were allowed to eat dessert. I have always been an extremely curious little girl, and the reason Nate and I grew so close was because he was a curious boy as well. We had no idea about the outside world. We had so many unanswered questions and sometimes we would make up answers to tame our brains. The girls had relatives visiting them during the weekend, but I would stay in my room. Sometimes I cried, and sometimes I shut my eyes close and tried to imagine what my mom looked like. One day during science class, Nate asked me who visits me on the weekend. I never said anything back. I pretended that I didn't even hear him. But in a moment of extreme confusion and sadness, I wrote something down on a piece of paper and passed it to him. It said, 
Let's get out of here. We were 12 years old at the time. I didn't care about the consequences at all. All I cared about was getting outside of here and exploring what was happening in the outside world. I wanted to go back to my uncle, even if he didn't want me. Nate looked at the paper, folded it into half, and he freaking swallowed the paper, and he just nodded his head at me. I wasn't sure what he meant by the nod, until at midnight. While I was looking at the stars I befriended for years now, I heard the slip of a paper under the door. I quickly got up and the paper said, meet me at the school building in five minutes. I slowly opened the door and ran downstairs. Nate and I stood there awkwardly not knowing what to do. We started discussing a runaway plan. But seriously though, what could two kids do to escape a fully guarded huge building? We were smarter than any of you would think. For the next week, we studied every movement happening around the place. When security guards changed their shifts, which teachers left class early, we even memorized the times when Mrs. Milton had to use the bathroom. We had a solid plan. At the end of the week, on Friday, we had history class and the teacher always left a few minutes early. At the same exact time, security guards changed their shifts. And Mrs. Milton took about three to four minutes to come downstairs and walk us back to our rooms. That was it. That was the moment I have been looking for all along. We passed by the guards back and we ran and ran like there was no tomorrow. After a few blocks, we were out of breath. We were two kids dressed exactly alike with no money and no place to go. But we couldn't stop. Not after we finally did it. We kept on walking and walking until it was night. I looked up at the sky and I could not believe my eyes. The sky had endless stars. I let my hair down and got rid of that stupid bun I've had for years. I decided that Nate and I could go into a shop and ask for a suitable job that could offer us a place to live and food. Yes, I was that smart. And I still am. So we went into a grocery store owned by an old lady. We told her our story and what she said back was, I need to call the police. And so we begged and cried and cried and begged. And the lady had a big heart. She offered us some sandwiches and said we could help deliver groceries around the block. We immediately agreed. Nate and I had to sleep on a blanket inside the store every night. It was not a great situation, but we loved that sense of freedom. We felt like we were hero kids with superpowers. We stayed with the old lady for what seemed like a year. If you haven't guessed it by now, I was in love with Nate. I had our wedding planned inside my head. And although he never said anything back, I knew he loved me even more. One day we heard that old lady talking to an officer who was looking for two lost kids. We grabbed all the cash we could and ran through the back door. I know it's inconsiderate to rob the woman who provided for us, but there was no other way. We quickly stopped the cab and asked the driver to drive as far as possible. He gave us a weird look, but when we showed him the money, he started driving. At this point, Nate held my hand for the first time ever, and he said, we'll be okay. I felt my heart melt to the ground, but traffic noise brought me back to my senses. The cab driver was driving funny, but none of us was really familiar with driving, so we never really paid much attention. I looked at Nate and he said, we need to find my uncle. He's rich, he can help. You can hide in my room, or he can even adopt us, I don't know. My voice was shaky. Nate replied and said, Hey, calm down. I promise we're going to be fine. Rachel, we have each other. This is all that matters. And I will help you find your uncle. I didn't hear the rest of his words. I woke up in a hospital bed. I screamed at the top of my lungs. A nurse came in and I said, Who are you? Why am I here? I need to leave right now. Where's Nate? The nurse gave me a pill and some water. She said, calm down, 
You'll be fine. Your friend is fine. You got into a car accident. What's your name? I pushed her hand away and refused to take the pill. My name is Rachel and I need to see my friend right now. The nurse just left me. Then an officer came in. He started asking questions and I kept asking to see Nate. I never answered any of his questions. I asked him to call the nurse again and she came back. I asked her to help me sit straight because I could barely feel my legs. Maybe I'd been sleeping for too long, I don't know, she just stood there. I looked down and I didn't have legs. What, what happened, I asked. The accident happened, Rachel, the nurse replied. Now I'm a crippled orphan? No, that couldn't be true. I'm not sure why, but I was super calm, and I asked, What happened to my friend? He is okay. Where are your parents? I stared up at the white ceiling and never said anything back. I don't know how, but it was suddenly next day morning and the officer woke me up. I told him the whole story, and I described my uncle and his business name. I needed all the help I could get, but no one was telling me anything about Nate. The doctor explained that I will be able to walk again, but it might take up to a few years. Later that day, my uncle came. I had an ocean of mixed feelings, but my eyes were stoned. I couldn't shed a single tear. The first thing he said was, Why did you do that to yourself, honey? He? dared to call me honey and to blame me for his own doing. I half smiled and said, The doctor said I'll walk again. Have you heard anything about my friend? He told me that Nate had a brain concussion and he's in a coma. And that was when my stone eyes melted. I felt guilty. It was me who made him run away. If it wasn't for me, maybe he would have been fine now. Uncle Todd, could you please call in the doctor for me? I asked. The doctor was very understanding. Although he did not have a full picture of what was going on, he explained to me that Nate will be fine, and I believed him. My uncle paid for my surgery and for Nate's stay as well. How confusing! If he had such a big heart, why did he admit me to a foster home? I lost count of the days. I wished I was back at the orphanage, sitting next to Nate while he helped me with my homework. A month passed by, and Nate was doing a lot better. I saw him a few times, and I was able to walk a few steps with the help from the nurses. My uncle visited from time to time and I could tell he was trying to make it up to me. But wasn't that just a bit too late? Six months later, we were both sent back to the orphanage with reports that Nate is at a risk of a brain stroke, and that I couldn't walk or stand for too long. My uncle offered that we stayed at his house, but we both knew he never meant it. Back at the orphanage, we were treated differently. It wasn't just the same. Things have changed. Mrs. Milton had quit. The new guardian was called Mrs. Buffy, like the one from Buffy the Vampire Slayer. Let me tell you that that woman was not kind. During break time, Nate and I would discuss what we wanted to pursue as careers, because we only had a few years left here, and then we could just leave without having to run away. Nate wanted to become a programmer. The guy was a true genius. I wasn't so sure of what I wanted, but if you guys still remember the beginning of my story, I knew I was destined for something special. Mrs. Buffy caught us exchanging love letters, and Nate and I were forbidden from sitting next to each other in class. Well, except during history class, because the teacher didn't really care much about anything. We were also expert sneakers by now so we managed to steal a kiss every now and then. Things were starting to get better. I could walk better, and Nate could talk better, because he had a problem with stuttering. A year passed by, 
and we were about to leave the orphanage and go to college in less than six months. One day during break, Nick started throwing up. Mrs. Buffy refused to even call a doctor. The next morning, he couldn't speak at all in class, and he started throwing up again and again. I ran up to Mrs. Buffy to take him to the hospital, and she replied, We can't afford hospital, Rachel, and looked the other way. Call my uncle right now, I screamed at her. Fine, she said in a very careless voice. My uncle came, and Mrs. Freaking Buffy refused that I go with them. And so my uncle took Nate to the hospital. After four hours, my uncle came back, and without my consent, he demanded I leave and go home with him. I was so concerned and just went with him. I kept on asking questions and he said nothing back. He parked in front of his mansion and he said, They tried their best at the hospital. I'm so sorry. And he hugged me for the first time ever. I pushed him back and he said, what does that mean? Do you mean that Nate is gone? And then my uncle started crying. He invited me to go inside, but I refused. No, no way. Nate couldn't just leave me like that. I walked away. I sat on the pavement recalling all the memories we had together. I looked at my artificial legs and kicked them so hard, but I didn't feel a thing. I lived with my uncle for a year, on the condition that I will pay rent until I could move out. What if Mrs. Freaking Muffy had called the doctor? Wouldn't Nate be here right now? I had nightmares about killing her every single night. I got a part-time job as a teacher. I paid my rent and saved the rest for college. I finally knew what I wanted to study. I wanted to study journalism. I worked day and night until I could afford college. I sent hate letters to Miss Buffy every now and then. As soon as I graduated, I landed a one in a million job. I worked for the biggest newspaper in town. I moved out from my uncle's, but we are on good terms. Two years later, I went back to the orphanage, only to find out that another kid had died due to lack of responsibility. Although Mrs. Buffy was old and even grumpier now, it didn't stop me from getting back at her. I wrote every detail of Nate's story and submitted it to my boss. He never even knew I grew up in an orphanage. The story went viral. I was even interviewed to share more details on television. Finally, Mrs. Buffy went to prison after a long trial. Oh! I could almost hear Nate smile in heaven right now. I may not have legs, and I may get bullied every now and then, but I have Nate living inside my heart. After things went viral on social media, I was able to get enough donations to open my own foster home in Nate's name, and to forever honor his name. See? I told you, I was destined for something extra special.